Yo guys, and uh, to those out in the international community as well as local community, um, thank you for the feedback. I am deliberately out of shot because I want to show you guys how I use a manual wheelchair. It's just about slowing down the movements until you get used to the cadence. As the cadence, as your motor memory increases, the cadence will become faster until eventually your front costs is about one or two inches off the ground. I will never have the trunk control. I will never have the trunk control to pop a wheelie down some steps facing forward. But with the small hop skips and jumps, that's absolutely fine. So my message again you see my message is if you want to overcome spasticity if you want to overcome spasticity and sorry if I offend people in the spinal cord injured community with this analogy but make like a paraplegic you can be born spastic diaplegic you can be born spastic quadriplegic but if you have a good upper limb function make like a paraplegic why is this important two reasons one, you get more mobility and you get more function and you can sometimes have a funkier chair. Chairs are important because they become part of your clothing, part of your self-image. Embrace them, make them part of you. Two, sometimes, especially for people who don't understand disability as good as you do or your friends do or your community does, Sometimes you need a bit of sleight of hand until you see they can become comfortable with the other parts of your regime. So make like a paraplegic. Seating options can vary, but seating and diet, believe it or not, goes hand in hand. I used to eat yogurt and usually I used to gain a lot of weight, but with that I gained a lot of strength. Also, seating options for people with cerebral palsy or worse, or are vastly, almost sometimes non-existent or overkill on the velcro steps. It's where you put the velcro steps that matter. If your extensor spasm is getting to you, what you want to do is strap your legs in over here, or just wear a heavier shoe as I'm demonstrating in the video for you now. The weight of a boot as well as your AFO, if you wear one, will negate the extensor spasm. And then, then it's always good to have a strap around the waist. I prefer not to because when I urinate, I go into extensive spasm and could potentially tip the chair over. So that's a no-no for me. Um, and as I say, in a social situation, sometimes you really want to make like a paraplegic. But guys, that's where I'm going to leave it. I hope it helps. No offense meant to the uh, community of spinal cord injured people, but sometimes mimicking a another part of a disability is sometimes where it's at if you want to overcome and outgrow your current condition. Um, my name is Alex Henry. Please find me on Facebook Messenger. Leave me a comment in the comment section. Um, thank you to the gentleman from Canada. Had a lovely chat with you. Looking forward to continually engage with you. And uh, also from one of my Cape Town friends, Hande Go, thanks for the check-in this morning it was. Much appreciated. Keep on looking sexy. That's where I'm going to leave it.